Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. And um, here it is. Once again, tomorrow. They've changed the name of it. It's, um, what are they calling it now? Take Our Daughters and Sons to Work Day. <clears throat> Formerly called Take Our Daughters to Work Day. And when everybody rightfully uh, pointed out that that was sexist, now it's been given this really cumbersome title instead of uh, something more catchy or snappy like bring the crumb crunchers to work day or bring the rugrats to work day or bring your little brats to work day or use your kids as an excuse not to do any goddamn work around the office day. Or bring your kids to the office so your work can be done by other pathetic people who are single and probably have no children day. Or jam your cute little monsters in everybody's face day. Dean, are you bringing your kids to work tomorrow? Yeah, Dean's bringing the kids. All four. In mason jars. In pickle brine. Uh, oh, it's Thursday. That's right. I'm sorry. I thought it was tomorrow. Thursday. All right. You're yeah, right. Okay. It's it's Thursday, April 24th. Uh, it's this week. What the, what the hell? Yeah, Dean's going to bring all his fetuses to work. Ah, oh, damn. Now he's only got three left. <laughs> it was Bambi Jr. there. But don't worry, Snuggles Jr., Vito Jr., and, um, ah, damn, there goes another one. <laughs> uh, Dean's bringing the whole family. <laughs> Here's the email we received about uh, this this wonderful day to, uh, from Jill. Uh, here it is. Tom, um, I think you should do a special show about the annoyance of Take Our Kids to Work Day. I don't have kids, and although I think it is great if people want to spend time with their kids, I don't see why it has to involve inconveniencing everyone at work. Every year we have to make up some special exhibit or presentation for the kids where I work. What a major waste of time. And the email announcing this year's day said something to the effect that parents did not have to attend some of the afternoon activities, and that would be a, quote, good time to catch up on email and phone messages. So in other words, people with kids are pretty much not doing any work at all that day. Maybe we should insist that people without kids be entitled to a I feel like screwing around and doing nothing today at work and getting paid for a day. I like that. There could be special planned activities, says Jill, like a room set up for people to watch movies with popcorn and drinks, another room set up for people who just want to catch up on sleep, or maybe even a room where people could surf the net for porn. By the way, last year I tried to bring my dog, saying he was my surrogate kid, and I got in major trouble with all the stuffy parent types. What jerk signed Jill? Well, I will say this about people with children. Everybody with a child out there, there are exceptions, of course. <laughs> uh, people with children generally think that the whole world revolves around them and their kid. When their kids misbehave, uh, for example, I've given the example many times of the times I have been at Dodger Stadium or other sports venues where a person in the seat behind me who is too cheap to buy their own ticket puts Junior on his lap and Junior starts kicking me in the head. And I turn around once and give a glance. I turn around a second time and give a nastier glance. And finally I turn and say, hey, kid. Stop kicking me in the back of the head. At which point the proud parent gets all pissed off. I get tired of this attitude that the world revolves around your kid. It doesn't. And uh, I do think it is discriminatory to allow people to bring their little monsters into the office and then screw off all day while the kids are 
drawing pictures with uh, different colored pens and using the Xerox machine and uh, running around the office pulling things off people's desks while other people have to pick up the slack for you lazy morons. And your little brats. Personally, I don't understand the purpose of this day. Obviously, we know why this day was created. It was to brainwash little girls into wanting to go to the office instead of staying home and raising other little monsters like themselves. That was the idea of it. Take your daughter to work so she'll realize that what she wants to do is not stay home and do dishes all day, but go to the office where she can cut her hair really short, butch up a bit, act like a bitch, and never find a man and end up being a single mom like mommy. Or a lesbian like mommy. That was the original purpose of this holiday. Obviously, everybody thought it was sexist just to bring the girls in, so now it's bring our daughters and sons to work. Day. you got to be kidding me. I don't understand the purpose of this. I remember my dad used to take me to work every Saturday. He used to have to work Saturdays. He worked Tuesday through uh, Saturday. He was off Sunday and Monday. My dad worked at a newspaper, and on Saturday, you know, there was very few people there, but there were people there. They had to get the paper out. And so we went down to the newspaper on Saturday, where my dad would have me um, sit around. And you know when you're nine years old, ten years old, nothing more interesting than to go into a big, stinky old office down at the newspaper in some 200-year-old office building with a bunch of number one lead pencil. Have you used a number one lead pencil? They have those down at the newspaper. You've only heard of number two. Number one, lead pencils are like writing with a pencil made out of charcoal. I mean, these are like black, black, black lead pencils. It's unbelievable. Everyone looked like a little minute bowl, every pencil. Absolutely. I always used to say that about minute bowls. It looked like a number one lead pencil, and he did. Probably still does. But, uh, yeah, you know, sitting down there at the office, uh, using the telephone, using the Xerox machine... Uh, running up and down empty hallways so that my father couldn't find me, and then he would have to leave his desk and come down the office and, and track me down somewhere in this huge building where there were actually dangerous turns, you know, like places where there were these exposed elevator shafts or uh, the uh, printing presses for the newspaper where, uh, you know, the employees there had to wear headphones and uh, safety masks because they were inhaling all these chemicals. And there I am, nine years old, wandering around the building. It was great. Just great. I'm sure the people down there love that. So uh, now as an adult, I, I'm certainly sensitive to how people feel about this. Because uh, I don't have kids. I've never had kids. That I know of. And if you are my kid, please do not go. Like you used to say about uh, the best of king. If you hear phone numbers, please do not call. That's right. Please do not call if you are my child, okay? Do not call, do not write, do not knock. Do not contact the producers of Oprah Winfrey, Montel Williams, or Maury Povich. Okay, I do not want any tearful reunions. Forget it. But uh, so now here I am, an adult, and uh, sure enough, uh, people are now bringing their kids to the office. And this is just another excuse for the lazy, good-for-nothing workers of America who love to think of themselves as productive, but who continue giving themselves more and more holidays during the course of the year. We've got holidays now for every ethnic group, every religion, uh, all kinds of vacation days. Nobody works Fridays in the summertime. Let's come up with another way people can come to the office and get credit for being there without actually doing anything or producing anything. Not only that, let's come up with another way that people without children have to carry the load for the people who have children. There is nothing good about this day. Nothing. Do you agree or disagree? Tom like it. Wolf. Tom like it. Wolf. Eight hundred. Five. Eight hundred. Tom. 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 What's the good word today? Boobs. Boobs are back. The Tom like it show. Like us on Hot Talk 1080 KOT. The Tom Like It Show, 1 800 5800. Tom is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Take our daughters and sons to work day. 
By the way, everybody, uh, if you don't have kids, you tell your boss on Thursday to stick it if they ask you to do any work that is not in your job category in order to cover for these morons who are bringing their children into the workplace. Say no. The only reason this is able to go on is because people who don't have kids, all the young single people, all the gay people out there, all the uh, child free by choice people out there, they're the ones who carry the load for the morons with children who bring them into the office. And um, I say it's time for us all to say uh, no. Lay down the gauntlet. Michelle on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. I think that you should, that people, some people should bring their kids to work. I do. Why? Well, I put them to work. I make them work. You I make them work. What kind of work are they capable of doing at the office? They can make copies. They can make files. They can put stuff away. I have them help other people out, make copies, do things. How old are your kids? I have a uh, almost 11 and 7. You're 27 and you have an 11-year-old? Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. good. Okay. Uh, well, I, you know what? I, I still think the kids get in the way in the office, and oh, yeah. I've, seen, I mean, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, I can, I've seen it, too, but, you know, I think some kids, some kids, they should see what's going on and see what people are doing to work, you know? Yeah, well, if anybody asks me tomorrow to, to help out in the office, because somebody, oh, it's Thursday, will people bring their kids into the office? Yeah. I'm going to say no. Yeah, I, I understand. I mean, I some kids no, and some kids yes, but yeah. By the way, are these important documents the kids are filing? Uh, not usually filing, just having them copies. 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 Yeah, copies. Uh, I see. And getting things. Because I know we've had problems with adults here in the office who like miss a page. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to mention Dean by name, but uh, we've had people make copies in the office and leave out page two. Yeah. You get pages one and three, but not two. I know. I and you're telling me you have your 11-year-old child who was born to you when you were in junior high school. You have your 11-year-old son making copies in the office. Well, she does a good job, so. He does. She actually is more competent than half the people in the office, so hey. What kind of company do you work for? A moving company. Oh, I see. So. So his yeah. mentality is about equal to the rest of the guys who work there. Is that the deal? Um, well, she's she's pretty sharp, so <laughs> okay. done well with her. So just checking. Yeah. All right, All right Michelle. Tom. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Uh, this is Barry on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Barry. Hey, no kids. No kids. No work. Don't have them. Don't want them. They don't belong at work. Right. And that's it. I agree with you. Uh, but, you know, I I really get outraged when I see these kids running around the office. I'm sorry, I do. I just think, um, you know what? We're here to work. That's right. It's a, and I, I work in a lumber yard where we have heavy machinery, forklifts, lumber running around. We don't need kids running around there taking a chance of chopping their fingers, their hands. Has anyone ever brought their kids in there? No, if they ever did, I'd probably fire them on the spot. Good. <laughs> Good. By the way, you you know what? You have the option to do that. This is true. It's not like you're discriminating against somebody. You have the right to fire them. I'd love to see uh, more of that. It doesn't matter what color you are, what gender you are. You bring your kids to work, and you don't work there anymore. Good. Glad to hear that, Barry. I, you know, people ought to put out memos. Don't take your daughters and sons to work or get fired. Uh, and all it does is just mess everything up and screw up production and, and puts everybody in the wrong frame of mind. Right. Uh, no, and I don't have kids either. Don't want them. All they really do is suck money out of your wallet. And I, I like most women. <laughs> That's right. I got plenty of better things to do with my money. Right. You think they suck something else, but no. <laughs> Well, that's out of your wallet, not out of your pants. So, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it, after a while, it's only out of your wallet is the way that works. No, but no kids at work. Kids, even if it's an office, they don't belong there. It's not a place right. for kids. Kids belong in school or at home. I agree. All right, Barry, thank you. All right, Tom, hey, can you run me out with a bong hit? Here you go, Barry. No cough. Janine on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Janine. How are you? Do you care? Yes, I do. Doing great. I don't feel that children belong at work, and this is a disagreement my ex-husband and I have had for, for quite some time uh -huh. he he allows the children to go to work with him he's a banker and i feel that the one time i allowed my children to come in you know you give them a job and two minutes later they're they're back in your face saying okay what, what else do i do 
and you, you, you're not able to get anything accomplished. Right. So it, I, I don't think... Well, who are I, all the people who support this? We had one woman call in, and everybody else says this is a bad idea. Well, I, I mean, I, I see the point of why they would want to do it. No, I they, don't. What, what would be the reason? Uh, not, not in my opinion, but for those who choose to do it, um, it's giving children an opportunity to see what type of, of uh, occup you know, what types of jobs there are out there for them. Whether, please, whether it's you know what? Most people do jobs that they should hope their kids don't end up having to do. Right, right. You're, I agree. I my agree. God. And and that would be probably the only reason I would bring them is to see, see mommy does this. You don't want to do that. But I just think it's a hindrance, and and it it really is unproductive. You know, when you have kids constantly coming up to you and saying, you know, okay, what next? It interrupts the whole entire day no. for everyone else who who didn't happen to bring in kids. No doubt about it. Thank you, Aaron, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Aaron. How are you, my man? Do you care? I care. I'm doing great. Awesome. Well, uh, someone who's in law school right now, the first thing that comes to my mind is this is a huge liability to have these kids in the office. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, running around all over the place doing this or that. You know, there's enough liability as it is, and, you know, having kids isn't going to help it. Yeah. Um, You'd be better off having take your kids to the library day. Yeah. Uh, take your kids to the dentist day, you know, or uh, take your kids uh, to eat healthy day. Yeah, so I totally wanted to agree with you on that. Um, the one thing, though, that you mentioned earlier was that uh, you think that we're taking holidays, things like that. But I think that in comparison to the rest of the world, I think we're overworked. You think we're overworked? I think that we work more than any other country. Our hours per week are more than... Oh, I don't agree with that. You think you work, uh, you think you work more than people in China, mainland China? Um, well, not some of the people who are working really low hours, but... I mean, no, no, I mean, in mainland China, an agrarian culture, you're telling me that you believe well, I, you I work harder and longer hours the than day. people in mainland China? Come on. Not China, but I know... How about Mexico? Country. You think you work harder than people in Mexico? Do I? I'm not working yet, so... I'm All right, but you think we uh, work harder than people in Mexico? Um, I think I. Th I'm not now, you live in L.A. You see how hard Mexicans are willing to work when they're in L.A. What do you think they're on like uh, vacation when they're in Mexico? <laughs> no, you do have a point there, but I think that for the most part. Yeah, you know, we love to say we work harder than anybody else, but come on, we're on the verge of having Arbor Day as a national holiday. It's insane. Thanks a lot for the call, Aaron. I appreciate it. The Tom Likas Show. Only one radio station has the... This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thursday, take your daughters and sons to work day. Lisa, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, the company I work for, when uh, it was time to uh, schedule that little event for day, I thought it was great. It was extremely structured. The kids weren't even with us. Um, I work for a large company, and there were over 60, 70 kids at a time, 80 kids. They would be put into groups of 10 to 15. And what, what exactly does this accomplish? What do you mean, what does what accomplish? Having this day, structured or unstructured. What does it, it accomplish? It gives the kids the opportunity to see what mom and dad do all day long while they're at But they're not even with you. No, but they have questions, just like anyone else does. Yeah, but can't they ask those questions at home? Yo, I, exactly, but you can say, oh, I work on a computer. Why should the company it? spend 10 cents bringing your kids to work? Well, it doesn't make any sense. What do you mean spend 10 cents? Well, okay, obviously How? somebody has to be assigned to watch your kids, take care of them, and answer their questions or whatever. It costs money. Personnel was in charge of that, and any parents... Well, any that means personnel can't do their normal work, like uh, figure out uh, who's violating company policy or tell people that they stink and need to wear deodorant or whatever they're doing down there at the personnel department. That's the job of the manager. Well, That's the job of your... Then the personnel, personnel department doesn't do anything except one day a year. The only time they have work is when the kids come in, one day a year. No. Your immediate uh, supervisor and your manager are going to report that to personnel before you're what, reprimanded. What, 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 the people who are with your kids, don't they have work to do the other 364 well, parents, days a year? No, the other parents that um, volunteer to help would have to take a sick or vacation day. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. And it, does it ever happen that people have to... A sick day, yeah, that's good. Uh, does it ever happen that uh, people in the office who don't have children end up having to do the work of people who do? You would do it anyway if you're on vacation, right? You have to cover for somebody else when they're on vacation. It's the same thing. Well, there are limits to that, too. Well, that that was what the company said as a structure, and I thought it was great because the kids weren't with us, but 15 minutes to say, this is what mom and dad do, and that's it. They took a company tour. Um, they assembled some material. They took a look at our catalog. Um, you know the company only does this because these feminist groups, like, practically bully them or threaten them into it. They're not doing it for any other reason. What do we have to do with feminist groups? Well, so there are no what do you think started this holiday? Who do you think started this project? There's no fathers that take their kids to work. Don't you know the pro the, don't you know what the whole genesis of this thing was? It was called Take Our Daughters to Work Day. And it was uh, created by feminist organizations who wanted little girls to uh, be indoctrinated at a young age to go take jobs at offices like like mommy. Well, I would hope that my, oh, I have sons, but I would hope that my daughter wouldn't have the same type of job I would. I hope she'd have a little more brains to. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't take her to work. I don't have a daughter. Well, yeah, that would be well, all the take our, Now it's take our daughters and sons. You want your son doing your job? No, so that he knows exactly what I do. I have a 16-year-old son that we go through this little rigmarole every single time. I explained to my son that um, I would hope that he isn't going to be this, do the same type of line of work that I do. By the way, how did you end up in such a lousy job? How did, did you, I end up in such a job? Actually, it wasn't. It isn't I kids you couldn't job. afford at too young an age, and then uh, you can end up having to do this? No, no. I'm just saying that nowadays it's very easy for a child to go to college. It's use easy. It's very exactly. expensive. It's expensive, but if you use your brain... And, and if mommy has a lousy school, job, the kid's not going to college. Uh, that's not true. Really? Because, right. Didn't you just... Do you watch uh, cable at all? Do you have cable? cable it, you mean cable TV? I've heard of yes, it, sir. and I don't think I have it, though. You have to have it. Come on. That's no. part of your job to be able what, to have That's cable. like when you can get rid of the antenna and you get, like, CNN. You have cable. No, I know I, you I've do. heard of No, I don't have cable. You have to in your line of work. Come on, Tom. No, I don't. Well, Lifetime Channel just had a pro uh, a oh, TV program no on uh, Sunday night. True story. Uh -huh. Homeless to Harvard. Young lady was homeless. Oh, yeah, that was a true story. Old. Yeah, that was a documentary, huh? It was a true story. No, that's what they say. It, they interviewed the woman right after. It's true. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, was it was true. So that means your kid can do it. Anybody can Maybe you ought to just put your kid in a dumpster and let him work his way up to Harvard. Why would I do that? Well, because if it happened on Lifetime, it probably happens in real life all the time. That's ridiculous. Uh huh. I'm just saying that if you set your mind at something and you do well in school, you can do anything that you set your mind to. And yeah, yes, it's good. Most people don't. I mean, for example, when they see mommy with a lousy job, most people settle for whatever mom did or dad did. I don't think that's necessarily true. Oh, yeah? Uh, what did your mom do for a living? My mom worked in a textile mill. Uh-huh. That was a lousy job? Uh, it put food on our table in a right. room. Right. And then mommy got a lousy job because her mommy had a lousy job. No, I don't think What so. makes I, you I, think I was... you're going to break the pattern? It wasn't a... Uh, how do you figure that either one of those jobs is a lousy job? You told me that you would hope your son wouldn't do for a living what you do for a living. Why have it such a great job? I, you asked me why would you take your kids to work, and I said so that you set an example. You so it's a, it's a it's a great job. Would you recommend your son do that job? What was that? Do you recommend your son do that job? My 16-year-old, no, because he already has it in his mind that he's going to college, so he wouldn't I be see. working on Who's that. paying for that? Who's paying for what? College. Uh, my son would be in, and my work pays for that. Work so pays for that? Yes. That's great. And what do people without kids get as a benefit over there? What do you mean, what do kids without benefits get? Well, well I... they pay for their college. They pay for their college. This is, It's a very good company. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, very uh, child-friendly, I see. Uh, if you well, are work uh, there. employee there and you are attending school, they also pay for your school. Hang on a second, Lisa. Gabby, what do you want to say to Lisa here? Hi, Lisa. Let me tell you where the first place that you're going to learn about work is ethics, and that's at home. My mom taught me to be on time to school, so I'm on time to work. My mom taught me to be respectful of others, especially authorities, 
and that's what I do at work. Okay, the first place that you that you learn about work ethic is at home, not at okay. your mom's place. Okay, not not anywhere else. That's where you learn it. I didn't have to go to my mom's work to find out about having a good relationship with my boss, or about being on time, or about being a hard worker. I didn't oh, need that example. And that's fine, but I didn't mention that at all during this conversation. I didn't say that that that's what you go to work for. I said that well, you don't it, need to take your kids to work to to learn about worth ethic and about oh what well, my mom I didn't does. say about I didn't say about I had nothing I had didn't say you said anything it was a good example. Ethic. You said it I was didn't a say, program. The best program is learning at home. No, no, no. I never said it was a great program. I said it was. Structured, You're defending so it, it aren't you? I if you're defending it, that, that means work. it's a good program. Well, she doesn't have to take her kid to work, but she does. No, well. I did it. My no, wait, hold on. I of uh, my three sons, only my youngest one went, and he went one time and didn't want to go the next two years. What does your husband do for a living? My husband's a receiving manager. I see. And uh, do they have this at his uh, office? No, they're a much smaller company. I see. Yes, yeah, they're a smaller company. There you go, Gabby. Well, at this location, well, I'm a teacher. And I don't take my kids to work because they see what their teacher does every single day. And I don't have to tell them what I do. They know what I do. All I have to do is tell them. But any other person, you could have a good conversation with your kids and teach them about what goes on at home and what goes on at work. Gabby, Lisa, thank you for the call. The Tom Like is shown, one 800 800 tom Melissa, hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? <laughs> it's a statement. Hi, Tom. Hi, Melissa. How are you? Do you care, Melissa? I do care. I'm doing great. Great. I just called to say that I don't. I think that if your parents have crummy jobs, it doesn't mean that you're going to go off to have a crummy job. Yeah, generally it does. No, it doesn't. Generally it does. Some, do, you know. Hey, generally. I have a I have a better job than my dad had, but uh, generally. Yeah. You know, like my brother, you know. My, my brother does a job slightly worse than what my dad did, about the same. Well, well, my mother was a nurse, and I think it's a crummy job. Yeah? And okay, so what did you become? I'm 21 years old, and I'm a real estate agent. You're a real estate agent? Yeah. I see. And how did you get into real estate? Let me guess, you had a kid, and you needed nope. flexible hours. No? No children. Why did you decide to get into that business? Because you, you can't get up in the morning? <laughs> I get, you know, I'm at the gym every morning at 5. Really? Then why did you decide to become a real estate agent? I met my uh, boss at the gym. You met your boss at the gym, all right. Now, you have a degree from which university, dear? I'm not done with school yet. I'm still I'm 21. How are you able to go to school and be a real estate agent at the same time? You know, the real estate market's very hot. Mm -hmm. And the money is awesome, so it really gives you your you have flexible hours. Yeah, that can there you work go. Flexible hours. That's why women love it. Women <laughs> hate coming. Up, women hate being told what to do. They hate being uh, told they have to be in the office at a certain time or a certain number of days per week. Tom, I've been divorced too. Oh well, of course you have. At twenty-one. <laughs> uh, how old were you when you got married? Nineteen. I met your boss at the gym. All right. Now you have a degree from which university, dear? I'm not done with school yet. I'm still I'm 21. How are you able to go to school and be a real estate agent at the same time? You know, the real estate market's very hot. Mm -hmm. And the money is awesome, so it really gives you your you have flexible hours. Yeah, that can there you work go. Flexible hours. That's why women love it. Women <laughs> hate coming. Up, women hate being told what to do. They hate being uh, told they have to be in the office at a certain time or a certain number of days per week. Tom, I've been divorced too. Oh well, of course you have. At 21. Uh, how old were you when you got married? Nineteen. Nineteen. Why'd you do that? Well, he swept me off my feet. He was twenty-nine. He swept you off your feet. Yeah. Into a dustpan. <laughs> no, he really. He was twenty-nine. I was nineteen. I met him at the bank. You met him at the bank. Boy, you just always. You just one of these gregarious sorts. Just go out in the public, keep meeting people. Yeah, I can't help it. And then you met your boss at the gym. Did you have uh -huh. sex with him too, or what? No. Not yet. No, he's fifty-two. So what? It's a little too old for me. Oh, I see. How old do you go? 47? No. How old do you go? 35 is the oldest. 35 is the oldest. Meaning that's the oldest you've gone so far. <laughs> that's the oldest I'm going to go. That's what you say now. Until another guy sweeps you off your feet. Yeah. And that lady who just called, who said she was a teacher. Yeah. She didn't even say work ethics. 
I mean, God, she's a teacher. Well, teachers, uh, another uh, reason, uh, another occupation women love because they don't have to work 12 months a year and they don't have to come in five days a week, uh, nine you know to five. What, real estate? Women real love estate. jobs like that. Oh, Tom, real estate is such an aggressive job. I mean, you can only survive if you're very, very aggressive. I see. So when you're in class and somebody wants to buy a house, what do you do? I make sure they get my card and I get their phone what number. What good does that do? If I want to make an offer on a house today and you're in class, what good does that do me? I'll leave class to write you an offer. Oh, you will, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Most likely you'll uh, get your voicemail. Oh, no. Hi, this is Melissa. I have two cell phones. I have two cell phones. You can always reach You me. can reach my pager. Is it 714? I've been out of pages since I was in junior high. I'll bet you have. People wanted to buy crack, and you had to be to their door. When are you going to buy a house? I have a house. When are you going to sell it? <laughs> I, dear, I just completely renovated my house. I'm moving in in June. Oh, oh, you haven't even moved in yet. Well, no, I've, I've lived in it for five years, and I just renovated it. Oh. Well, good. What city is it in? Hollywood, dear. Oh. Hollywood Hills. I'm in Orange County. Oh, wow, you couldn't handle my house. You're busy going to college in Orange County. <laughs> oh, that's a horrible thing to say. You couldn't but handle my, my listing. That my mom was a nurse and my brother... Just imagine nurse. having Tom Lycus as your client. I'm very I'm demanding. Tom, you know what they call me? Tom, Alexa Hente, the demanding one. What? Tom, if you saw my picture, you would love for me to be a real estate agent. Is that so? You would love me. Is, would you get under the desk and uh, write an offer for me? No. No, well, I wouldn't love I that. wouldn't have to. Well, see, what do you mean you wouldn't have to? What would seeing you have to do with it? If I'm not uh, getting any tail, what do I care what you look like? You would just you would just have a good time. Dear, uh, you know what? I'm, I, I'm not a window shopper, okay? I'm a buyer. You're not. In fact, I'm not even a buyer. I'm a leaser, okay? <laughs> You're not dating anyone right now? I don't buy cows. I milk them. I'm not a cow. All right, well, fine. Whether you're a cow or not, whatever you are, I milk it. I don't buy it. Hello? Yes. Mike, I mean, Tom, <laughs> sorry. Mike, huh? No, I was thinking about someone. Yeah, I bet you were. Brain fart. Tom, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Well, I certainly agree with that. Tom, 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 Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. You want to hear my favorite lunch? What's that? It's a, a can of tuna fish with a pickle and a couple of saltines. Yeah. yeah. When I hear about tuna fish and a pickle, I get other images. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. Likas on Hot Talk. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Take your daughters and sons to work day this Thursday. Krista, hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Krista. Um, what is it called? It's not just kids in the workplace. It's kids in college classes, too. Oh, God. They shouldn't even have effing kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. I was in a fashion design class, and kids running around everywhere with scissors, tracing wheels. These things are sharp. They can take off a finger. And surgers with carbon blades, and they're just running around. It's just a classroom full of free babysitters, basically. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. And, you know, we complain to the instructor, and she just goes, oh, well, you know, the kids might come here afterwards, and ugh. Oh, I hate that. And you're paying to go to college. It's not like yeah, going to work. you're paying a lot to go to college. You're paying and them, and you have to sit around while people bring their kids in? Screw that. Hey, do you tell them you won't babysit anybody's kids? Yeah, I, I told them, you know, it's hard to work, it's hard to read, it's hard to sew when they're running running around, you know, asking what the sewing machine does, asking what this is, what that is, what the book is for. You know, you can't learn, you can't work. Well, I, I'm telling every Tom Likas listener, when uh, you go to the office or the classroom and people are bringing their kids in, if anybody wants you to pick up the slack, just say no. Oh, I'm not just going to say no, I'm reporting it to the to the um, dean of the school. Good. <laughs> Good for you. I'm proud of you. Thank you for that. This is Joel on the Tom Likas Show. I've got 30 seconds, Joel. Hey, Tom. 